Good morning and welcome to worship. We're gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church and I am Pastor Eric Swanson. And it is nice to be together as we are a worshiping community gathered in person on Sunday mornings, but also gathered here online and welcoming you into this assembly that worships Christ who is our savior. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, please remember uh, looking to the last Sunday in January on Sunday, January 29th, we have our congregational meeting. We have some important things that we will be addressing and voting on and making those decisions together as a congregation. We'd love to have you participate in that congregational meeting on Sunday morning, uh, right after our worship service. Again, that's Sunday, January 29th. And then another reminder, please recall that in addition to Sunday morning worship here um, in the sanctuary and online, we also have a Wednesday evening community meal. Anyone is invited to come and participate in that meal. We start serving food at 530. And then after we eat, we also have a, a shortened, very casual, very informal worship gathering that's about a half hour long. And we share in worship in a kind of fun, different format. So. Please join us for that meal and maybe stay for the worship as well on Wednesdays. It's a very good gathering of people. Thank you for being with us this morning for worship and welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and love, we confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in our sin and we cannot free ourselves. Our hearts have turned away from you. We do not practice your righteousness. For the sake of the world that you love, forgive us so that we may be reconciled to one another and bring glory to your holy name. Amen. People of God, hear what God says. The former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of wonder, you are our strength and our redeemer. By your Holy Spirit, hold us forever. By your grace, may we faithfully worship you and serve you. Lead us to follow you joyfully. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Our first reading comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. It speaks about God's people, Israel, as God's servant. But this servant, Israel, is called with a task. It's not just a task to bring together the 12 tribes of Jacob, those ones who descended from Jacob. It, it's not enough just to bring them together, but God says, I'm giving you, I'm giving you as a light to the nations. You are a beacon that draws the whole world to God's salvation, bringing the whole earth into God's care. It's a beautiful picture about how God's work in the world and God's saving promises are, are not a small thing held just for a few, but God's invitation is a wide open and generous invitation given for the world. We hear from the prophet Isaiah. A reading from the 49th chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse one. Listen to me, O coastlands, Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up. Princes, they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of your Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Hi, Fieldburg friends. I was thinking about something. Do you ever have those things that just are exciting and you want to tell other people all about them? Maybe it's like your pets. We might have a puppy or a cat or, or maybe we've got a guinea pig and we just love to tell people all about our pets, that they're soft or they're cuddly 
or maybe they do some really fun tricks and we love to share that story with others. Or maybe you share some stories about your family. It could be about your brothers or your sisters. Maybe your mom and dad do some fun things or maybe you've got an aunt and uncle. Or maybe your family has a brand new little baby and you love to share stories about that little baby or that funny uncle who does really cool things. It's fun to share those stories. Or I know, we just had Christmas recently and maybe you had some really great Christmas presents and you couldn't wait to go running and, and share them with your friends and show your friends this really cool thing you got. Well, I was thinking maybe, maybe sometimes we could share exciting stories about Jesus. I was just having a conversation not too long ago and I talked to some big people, some adults, and, and we were saying, sometimes, sometimes adults don't always know what we want to say about Jesus. Where do we start? So I was thinking, maybe we could talk about that a little bit. I was thinking, I always remember that Jesus is the one who loves us a lot. And Jesus always holds on to us and cares about us and loves us. So on the days when we're really doing great stuff, or on the days when we're not doing anything important at all, Jesus still loves us. On the days when we're being really good, or on the day when we're kind of being a little stinker, Jesus keeps loving us. If we're doing good things, or if we're doing bad things, Jesus still loves us. But if we're doing bad things, Jesus does kind of wish we'd go back to doing good things, but he still keeps on loving us. I, I think all of that is a great story to tell, and I think Jesus cares enough to help put people together and help us be friends and to be a community like we have at Fieldburg. We're a community of people that hold on to each other and love one another, but Jesus helps do that. I think all of that's part of the Jesus story, and it's also part of the story that God isn't far, far away, but we, we know in Jesus is God comes really, really close. So close that Jesus can even live inside of us. I think all of that's a really good story. God doesn't stay far away from us. God loves us and comes this close. And that, that's a good story. And we should share that story and tell other people, I know Jesus, and he's right there, and he's right here. And we can share that story with other people and let them know that we're loved. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for coming near us. And help us to share Jesus with everybody else, because people need your love. And all God's people say, Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, and John declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom the Spirit descended and remains is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? 
They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated to mean anointed. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This summer, our grandkids went to hockey camp at the ice rink in Ames. I got to take them on the first day of hockey camp. They were just moving down here from Spirit Lake, so they were all brand new and, and they didn't know anyone. One of the hockey dads jumped right in to greet them. Where are you guys from? What ages are you? How long have you been playing hockey? Oh, well, well, you'll be playing with these kids right over here. And, and this excited hockey dad started making introductions right away. He told us that he's from Story City. And then he told all about how he got other kids from Story City to come down to Ames and start playing hockey with the Ames Flyers. This guy was on a mission. He was, he was like an evangelist for hockey. I shared this story with a, a group of other pastors. And another pastor just chimed in, yeah, yeah, we get so excited about, about all these other things. And then with a little Grin and maybe embarrassment, she shared her own enthusiasm about telling people she was at Costco. There was another woman there at Costco buying salsa. But if you're at Costco buying salsa, you can't get little jars because everything at Costco is in bulk. You gotta buy a big jar of salsa. So if you're gonna choose, you're committed. You're committed to whatever brand you select. So this woman stood there weighing her options. Which big jar of salsa do I want to take home? The pastor said she saw the moment and, and she jumped in. You've got to buy this brand. It, it's got this garlic zing. It's got the texture. And she gave her the whole sales pitch on which salsa she should buy. It's the funny thing we talked about there as that group of pastors. We know how to tell people about salsa or hockey or, or why my new car is the greatest car you could possibly get. We, we can tell you these four really important things about all that stuff. I wonder, I, I wonder how is it so easy to share those things? But it's not so easy when we share about Jesus. Huh, what are the four greatest things about Jesus? Why is it so much easier to get excited about salsa or, or hockey or my new car? But talk about Jesus? I don't want to sound pushy. You know, everybody's got their own beliefs. Well, that's fair enough. And, and to be honest, I'm not going to start interrupting people at Costco and tell them about Jesus. I mean, to be honest, I don't even interrupt people at the store and tell them about salsa either. But, but maybe, maybe I do have a friend or a family member. Maybe I want to make myself ready 
when that moment presents itself, to point to Jesus and maybe, maybe just perhaps invite somebody to come and see. That's really our gospel story for today. Pointing to Jesus, look, here is the Lamb of God. So what would I say? What would I say about Jesus? And, and, and how, how could this Bible story that we read today, how could that maybe help us answer that question? So when I dig into this story, the first thing I would grab onto out of this story is that phrase, Lamb of God. Lamb of God. The way John, the gospel writer, uses it, Lamb of God doesn't refer to a, a, a sacrificed lamb being slaughtered and, and burned on the altar. In John's gospel, the Passover lamb is more of what John is talking about. John, the gospel writer, wants to connect Jesus to the Passover lamb. So if you wander back into the Old Testament story of Exodus and you remember about the Passover lamb, the people slaughtered the lamb and they took some of the blood and they smeared it on the doorposts and on the lintel so that in that night death would pass over their homes and they would be protected and, and saved from death. Then they took that lamb and they roasted it and they ate and they were fed because their journey was coming soon. They were going to escape out of Egypt and leave slavery behind. And then God told them, repeat this feast, this commemoration forever. Remember. Remember, God is a God who sets you free. God is a God who saves you from death. God is a God who feeds you for the journey. And so in this story, in this story, John the gospel writer has John the baptizer say, here, here's the new Passover lamb. Here's the one who sets us free from our sins. Here's the one who saves us from death. Here's the one who is with us on the way. Now, remember, hold on to that forever. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Digging into this story some more, the second great thing that I would say about Jesus is that phrase that comes next. He takes away the sin of the world. Sin is real. In other places, Jesus speaks and he tells us that the greatest commandments are to love God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And, and to love your neighbor as yourself. I don't live up to that. None of us live up to that. We, we get turned inward on ourselves. Selfishness creeps in. I'm kind of lazy some days. It, it's hard to be caring and concerned and, and hardworking and attentive to the needs of the world all the time. Sometimes I almost just want to retreat in and, and hide from it all. I suppose I could end up just getting buried under a mountain of guilt and self-criticism and self-judgment. I, I could be really tough on myself for not paying attention to the ways of God. But not all sin is, is that kind of sin. There's also the sin 
that other people try to shove onto us. It's the kind of ways that people make us feel like there's something wrong with us for just being us. You're not good enough. You didn't try hard enough. You don't look right or you don't look good enough. You weren't born into the right family. You don't have the right ancestry. You're not rich enough, athletic enough, smart enough. You don't fit in. We sometimes get labeled with, with all kinds of labels stuck on us. We get tagged with all kinds of sins that other people want to put on us. But look, look, here's Jesus who takes away all of that sin. The sin that we do, the sin that other people try to put onto us, Jesus takes away all that sin. Not for a couple, not for one or two or a few special ones. There's Jesus who takes away the sin of the world. Third one. A third little piece about Jesus that I, I hear in this story, John the baptizer looks at Jesus and says, here's the son of God. So John the gospel writer and John the baptizer, they have a different idea about son of God, different than maybe some of the other gospel stories. In the gospel of Matthew and in the gospel of Luke, we've got a birth story. Oh, and in each of those Gospels, there's also a genealogy. This one begat this one, who begat this one, who begat this one, and we get generations and generations until finally it comes all the way down to Jesus. There's none of that in John's Gospel. John gives us this. I saw the Spirit of God come down onto him and remain on him. And because of this, John knows that Jesus is the Son of God. John gives us this whole different picture. God, majestic, heavenly, infinite, this God somehow fits into a person, that one, right there. You can see him with your own eyes. God comes that close. God is, is now one of us. And yet at the same time, John always holds on to the mystery and the wonder of God. All through John's gospel story, we get phrases like, I am in the Father and the Father is in me and now I am in you and we dwell in him. In John's gospel story, there are no straight line genealogies to define son of God. No, in John's gospel, it's, it's a lot more about relationships and connections. It's all kind of swirly and mixed around and complicated. Maybe because John knows that relationships are complicated living in God and living in Christ and Christ living in us, it, it's not as easy as drawing a straight line or connecting the dots. It's a little more complicated. It, it's a relationship. And God, in Jesus, wants to be part of our complicated sometimes messy relationships. 
So in John's gospel, God is a relationship. Son of God. That's Jesus. Here's the fourth thing that I would say about Jesus by looking at this story. It's a little statement that Jesus makes. Come and see. Two of the disciples of John the baptizer, they go after Jesus. They, they go follow him and they call him teacher. And they ask Jesus a question, where are you staying? Because they called him teacher, it seems to suggest that they're asking, where are you teaching? Where do we go to hear what you have to say? Jesus says, come and see. Jesus doesn't get into a, a long religious discussion or argument. It, it's not really going on a recruiting drive. He doesn't say we need to unpack some religious doctrines here or, or have some drawn out discussion about what religion is best or maybe get into a morality war about who's right and who is wrong. Jesus just gives an invitation. It's an invitation to two people. I don't know that those two people are any better than you or me or anyone else who might have been around at the time. The story doesn't say that they were somehow special in any particular way. They're just two people who stumbled into a question. Where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. And because of that, they get to be the first two disciples. So what's amazing about Jesus? I guess what I hear that's so amazing about Jesus is it's not a mysterious path. It's not some complicated thing we have to unpack and discover. It's an invitation, a caring and loving Savior who says, Come and see. I guess for me, that's, that's the great message of Jesus. It, it's not about being pushy. It's not about pouncing on people in the store or a recruiting drive to get members. And it's not that we think we need to charge out into the world and save people's souls. Just by the way, Jesus saves people's souls we don't. But our calling is this, to point to Jesus. To point to Jesus and maybe say, there's the Lamb of God who sets us free, who gives us life, who is with us on the way. To point to Jesus and say, there's the one who takes away the sin of the world, the sins we've committed, the sins that others try to force on us. Jesus takes away all of that. There's the Son of God, a child of God, who's now one with us. There's Jesus, the one who cares enough to invite us. Come and see. It's a good picture of Jesus. Now, what would you say about Jesus? Amen.
God who loves the whole world calls us to be servants and friends to others. Trusting that this is true, we confess our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God blesses us and blesses the whole creation with all good gifts. And in faith, we see God's generosity and we respond by sharing our gifts to build up the work of the church. Seeing God's goodness and knowing that we are called to respond, we join together in prayer. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and you let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all of your works of merciful power. Then shape us into your workers, bringing justice, hope, and love. We magnify your name and we praise you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God who welcomes, teach your whole church to invite people and to say, come and see. Bless and guide your church in our worship and in our serving, in our fellowship and our friendship, in our music and in our words. Bless and guide your church in everything so that we gather others into the love of Jesus. God who loves the world, you joined the creation by becoming one of us in Jesus Christ. Help us to see that you love everything that you have made. And then, direct our choices and our actions so we do not harm or destroy your good creation. Make us humble stewards of your gifts so that all your children have a share in your goodness. God who forgives. Your Son, Jesus, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Teach mercy and forgiveness to leaders throughout the world. Help us to put away our ancient hostilities and bitter rivalries. Move people and nations beyond our old sins and lead us to forgive. Guide us toward the love of Jesus. God who listens, turn your ear toward all who call out to you. Bring help and hope to all who suffer. Cure our diseases. Heal our broken and worn-out bodies. Renew our troubled and frightened souls. We remember especially all whom we name to you. Fill this world with the love of Christ and point us toward him. God, author of justice and peace, we praise you for all your faithful servants who lift up the lives of your people. We remember Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer and all who witness it to the ways of your kingdom. Join us with them to do your holy work in the world. God who makes us holy in every place and in every time, you come near and you make your people holy. We give thanks for those servants who have gone before us who pointed others to the light of Jesus that shines into the world. Make us part of that great cloud of witnesses. We bring our hopes and needs to you, loving God, trusting your wisdom and power, revealed in Christ crucified and risen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the rod of the oppressor, bless you, strengthen you, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.